It's the Deep Slant 101 presented by Xfinity. Our guest this week, the host of B Scar TV himself, Brennan Scarlett. Welcome in, Brennan. How's it going? Good, good. Thanks for having me. I love the Rock Boys this year. I feel like mm -hmm. every year a certain position group really stands out as bringing the juice and the adrenaline. Yeah. And it's usually DBs, sometimes it's wide receivers, mm -hmm. but the linebackers, the Rock Boys, have really come into their own this year. What, what's going on with the energy of, of that position group? Uh, we just got we got a lot of good guys in the room, a lot of playmakers in the room, so a lot of opportunity to get out there and rock out uh, with the boys. And so the linebacker this year just kind of taking that and you know everybody grabbing an instrument and, and gets going <laughs> when we make a play. Yeah, I think we were talking to Whitney about it. He said it was it sort of came about in training camp. You guys mm -hmm. just messing around, decided to whip out some instruments, and that yeah. became a celebration, which became the Rock Boys. And now you guys exactly. have your own T-shirts. You we provided do. the group with T-shirts recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're uh, we have a uniform now. Oh, it's a uniform. Okay. Yeah, we we do have a uniform. Um, so. It's not just straight chaos anymore. We got some structure to the rock. Boys, yes, you, you know? definitely. Well, what happens to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, all black, um, the the um, game day fits that you guys put see that. Rock in. See that is that's separate from the Rock Boys. Okay. That is specifically in the inside linebacker room. The outside linebackers don't take part oh, in I that see. pre game okay. group um, matching. The matching gear, unless it's yeah. a Rock Boys shirt. Unless it's a Rock Boys shirt, but um, yeah, that's the inside linebackers thing. You guys are so calm and collected off the field, and then you're on the field and you become the Rock Boys. I want to talk about that transition. One day in practice, you know, we watch a little bit of practice. We watch you guys activate, which is mm -hmm. the warming up period. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, the entire team got into a huddle, and I want to say it was Bernardrick McKinney was in the middle and started doing his pregame huddle. You'd think it was a game day, and you guys just yeah. were just so energized. Mm -hmm. I find out later that that was a walkthrough. It was not even a full oh. practice. <laughs> but the energy yeah. that you guys bring, like when does that transformation sort of, when do you guys just put on those rock boy hats and really get to work? Um, How about for you, you know, personally? I think, I think just as soon as you step on the field, you know, it's, uh, you know, we train all year round uh, for the opportunities that we have during the season, you know, so, um, you know, you have a lot of built up excitement and energy and, uh, you know, the best way to perform it is using that energy, you know, and, uh, you know, having obviously the games, you got 16 for sure opportunities to go out there and show your stuff, but even in practice, like, you know, those are limited opportunities too. And, you know, all off season you train and, train and then you get those limited opportunities so you might as well come with some juice yeah you definitely do so you're four <laughs> for you and you came I mean we remember when you were here as an undrafted mm -hmm. and here you are year four you signed the big contract extension before the season started what about those limited opportunities for you because Bill O'Brien says you've done a really great job of taking your limited opportunities and turning into your role on the mm -hmm. team now how did you manage that because now it seems like you're getting better and better because of all the opportunities. But how did you sort of make that jump? I imagine it was harder early on when you weren't on the field as much. Yeah, yeah. I think um, the biggest thing for me is just to continue to grow um, every day, you know, regardless of what those opportunities look like. You know, find a way, whether it be in practice, sitting back and watching J.J. Watt rush or watching Whitney Merciless set, set the edge, you know as a younger player learning and like, okay, I can grow in that way. I might not be out there getting those reps, but at least I'm, I'm learning and seeing the, you know, the footwork or the hands or, you know, the techniques. And, you know, from there, special teams, let me make sure I, I'm the best that I can be and, you know, continue to set goals, you know, best, uh, you know, I just want to be the best out there. I want to win every rep. So if I can do that, I know I'll continue to grow as a player. And then, you know, now on the defensive side of the ball, the same thing goes. And, um, yeah, it's just something that I think uh, will continue through my career, but it's helped me to this point. When you first started out, I imagine a lot of guys who were undrafted say they had a little bit of a chip on their shoulder mm -hmm. to prove, you know, that they were someone that could yeah. contribute on a team. What was that like for you? What did you envision for yourself? Have you sort of exceeded your expectations of where you thought you could be? Or is this sort of what you had pictured for yourself, that you were going to be on the defense, be a big part of it, you know. Yeah. What did you think as far as your NFL career starting out? Uh, I think, you know, luckily I grew up um, 
with a support system and a, a close-knit family that instilled a lot of confidence in me. You know, my, my parents did a great job of, you know, letting me know that I can do anything if I set my mind to it. And, you know, if you work and prepare, um, you can do anything. So that's how I approach the game of football. You know, I, um, regardless of where I'm at as a player, I always see, you know, the the growth opportunity, the potential of what it could be. So, you know, to be where I am now uh, in year four and having started as an undrafted free agent, I mean, I obviously it's hard to expect this to happen, but, you know, this is what I've worked for, you know, and, uh, and even now I continue to see, like, I want to continue that con trajectory and, you know, see bigger, bigger things. So it's kind of uh, something that I would say I, I I give uh, thanks to the parents for You are expected to do a lot of things, both on defense and special teams, like you mentioned. Is there one aspect of your game that is your most favorite thing that you get to work on? I know you had the strip sack against Carolina mm -hmm. a few weeks ago. So that had to have been pretty fun. You've caused yeah. some turnovers in your in your time on special teams. Yeah. That's is there a, one play that just really is the play that is most exciting? You know, I think, I think you hit it on the head there. I think getting the ball out from play. the, yeah, from the offensive player and getting the ball back to our offense, you know, so they can go down there and score. It's just, that's a huge turn uh, in the game. You know, it's a big momentum swing. And you know what they say about Big Mo? What do they say about Big Mo? I don't know, but Big Mo, man, he's, uh, he's important. I think that should <laughs> be need, on a Rock Boy shirt. You need Big Mo <laughs> you on your man. side. So if you can get that ball out, then Big Mo is gonna, Take one step closer to you. All right, how does Big Mo travel when it comes to London? You got a big game in London coming up. I know you're like a little bit of a world traveler, but yeah. how does that change when you have to play overseas? First time for the Texans to play in London. First time for yourself as well. Uh, so Big Mo, I think, you know, you never know when uh, when he'll show up, but hopefully it's a, it's on the first kickoff of that first kickoff return, and uh, and he peeks his head for the, for the good guys. Are you excited about going over there and playing in front of those those English fans? I am. I am. I'm. Uh, I'm really happy that uh, this beautiful game of football is becoming uh, more of an international thing. Obviously, it's uh, it's big here in in America, and uh, I think there's a lot of opportunities for it to continue to grow worldwide. So, uh, I'm really excited to be a part of that opportunity. And I think uh, actually having traveled to London this past off season and. Uh, seeing the people and the sights and just kind of the vibe of the city, I think it'll be a good fit for uh, for us as we go out there. All right. So in the off season, you did some traveling. You also were doing some some video videos, I guess. Mm -hmm. Was it YouTube mm -hmm. or you had a Brennan Scarlet yeah. channel? So mm -hmm. now you've got B Scar TV. You're in the locker room on Fridays doing your thing. Yeah. Um, is this what you sort of? Uh, is this like something that you think you might want to do in the future one day? What What do you want people to see when they see you? in front of the camera? Ooh, wow. That's like uh, two questions in one. Yeah. So let's start with what, you want, what do you want people, okay, let, first of all, would you do this? Was this something that you could see yourself doing in the future? I enjoy being in front of the camera. I, I, I do. I think that there's a certain uh, performance aspect to it that I enjoy, um, you know, and I can relate that to what I do now, you know, playing ball. It's a, it's a performance. But there's also an art to it, and I'm sure you can appreciate that. Like, sure. you know, there's an art to what you do, and how you ask questions, and how you formulate them, and how you get your guests comfortable, and mm -hmm. stuff like yes, that, definitely. right? And yeah. so I think there's an art to it. So, you know, that intrigues me as well. But, um, you know, possibly. But I, I really just have fun with it. It's a creative outlet for me now. So, who knows? When people watch you, because it's a very different side of you and your teammates that they see versus what they see on Sunday, yeah. what is it that you hope really gets across to the fans that are watching B Scar TV? Uh, you know, B Scar TV is, um, as you pointed out, it's it's the pursuit of high quality content. So it is. On B Scar TV, we want our viewers to see our guests and the guys on the team for who they are. You know, without the helmet, without the jersey. You know, these guys are, uh, are great dudes. They're all so different and, uh, you know, just to be able to see their individual personalities. It's, uh, I think it's a cool opportunity for the, 
for the viewers and the fans to see uh, the Texans kind of in a more relaxed uh, state. I agree. I mean, you guys are having so much fun on and off the field. Why shouldn't everyone else get a chance yeah, to enjoy it too, They should right? take part. Good stuff. All right, we hope you have a lot of fun as the season continues. Best of luck. Running Scarlet on the Deep Slam. Thank you.